For the last almost 30 years, the world has been treated with Mortal Kombat. And even if you're barely a gamer, it's a good chance that you would have at least heard of it. If you're a fan of cheesy 90 movies, you would have probably heard of it. If you've played Laser Tag one time within the last 30 years, you definitely heard the soundtrack. One of the biggest draws in the MK universe is the violence. Sometimes it was cartoony, funny, over the top, it really had it all. And since the first Mortal Kombat movie that came out in 95 and Annihilation that came out after was shit, it's fair to say that most people were pretty excited for the new movie to come out. And thanks to COVID, we had to wait even longer. But at least we had the games to keep us busy in the meantime. One of the more fun aspects of the newer games were the secret characters, and us horror heads could enjoy some of our favorite slashers in a new way. Seriously, if they do another Jason movie, it should be like this. Jason win. The movie finally came out this last weekend and invaded the TV that I have down here, and I'm going to break down the plot without too many spoilers first. The movie starts off with introducing one of the greatest rivalries of all time, Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero. Then we jump several hundred years and get to know Cole, while we are following a new character when the game has about 70 characters to choose from. Well, it's because people who don't know shit about Mortal Kombat wrote it in. He is a washed up MMA fighter with a small family. They get attacked by Sub-Zero, but Jax risks his life to save them. He tells Cole to find Sonya Blade and she breaks down the Mortal Kombat tournament and she's just exposition dumping for a couple of minutes. She also has Kano chained up and they all get attacked by Reptile, whose form changes in almost every game, but he's looking more lizard-like, uh, like in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Anyways, they survive and look for Raiden's temple, because that's where all the Earthrealm fighters go to train. They meet up with Liu Kang, Kung Lao, and Raiden, who tells them that the fighters are chosen by having a dragon birthmark on their bodies, which allows them to unlock special magic powers. But in the temple, they constantly get attacked by Shang Tsung, who is the big bad and his fighters. He attacks before the next tournament because if they win this next one then Outworld, which is where they are from, can come and invade Earth. Raiden makes a shield so that they can train until the next tournament, uh, but Kano betrays them to no one's surprise and everyone fights and without spoiling too much, the good guys win, the bad guys lose, and the ending sets up future movies which would, I guess, take place a few days after this one because the whole movie happens before the tournament, which is supposed to be within a few weeks from when this movie starts. And that's the whole movie. So, how's the acting? It's pretty cheesy and over the top. The best in this regard comes from Kano, who is not only funny, but he really dives deep into the character. How's the fighting? There are about a dozen fights, and only two of them are good, and the rest were pretty unimpressive. Some of the best fight scenes I've seen in recent years are from Indonesian fighting movies, and the people who choreographed Mortal Kombat should have taken a page out of their book. How's the CGI? It's meh. Goro looks moderately better than the practical effects version of him that came out 30 years ago. Let's dance. (laughs) 
There's another CGI character or two, but I won't spoil those just yet. One looks good, the other looks terrible. Raiden's eyes look like a Snapchat filter, and it was dumb to be able to see his pupils and his irises. They should have been white all the time, or sparingly. How's the score? Not the kind that gets you pumped for a fight scene, which is the whole purpose why anyone would even see this movie. Costumes are hit and miss, and when I say miss, I mean like cosplay level miss. The story is odd. Not only do we follow a character who isn't an original Mortal Kombat character, but also the way people are chosen for Mortal Kombat tournament is not what you'd expect. My overall rating is a 6 out of 10 at Best. The main reason why a fan of Mortal Kombat would want to see this movie is the fighting, just like in Godzilla vs. King Kong. But the fighting doesn't really deliver, and there aren't that many fatalities to enjoy. Now I'm going to go into major spoilers, so feel free to turn this off and do whatever. 3, 2, 1, here are the spoilers. One of my biggest gripes is that they totally pwn Goro. He's one of the biggest bads in Mortal Kombat, and he just gets killed by the new guy in Black Panther armor before even doing anything? I don't know if this is 100% canon, but isn't Goro the main reason why Outworld won nine Earthrealm tournaments in a row? Because he was the undefeated second-to-last guy? I understand the focus on the Sub-Zero vs. Scorpion rivalry, but every Mortal Kombat character it has a backstory and some of them are great. And with the cartoon movie that came out this last year, I'm just tired of the focus on these two like no one else has a story to tell in this universe. Also, you'd think Scorpion would be in the movie more, but he's only there for the best fight scenes. Also, the original Sub-Zero was a bad guy, yes, but I'm pretty sure it was Quan Chi who killed Scorpion's clan with the Lin Kuei just so he could make Scorpion his puppet, but I guess they did away with that part of the story. At first, I hated the bad guy lineup because half of them no one cares about, which makes sense, so no fan would actually be upset if they died, but Cabal looked horrible. His entire costume looked like cosplay, along with Reiko, or Raiko, I don't know how you pronounce his name, who looks nothing like he did in the one game he was in. Nitara was another one game character who was like a vampire, and her CGI wings looked awful. I thought the birthmark aspect was dumb. Who picks the people who gets them? Is there a cap to how many fighters each side can have? And if you have to kill someone to get it, wouldn't Outworld have all of them since they won 9 tournaments in a row? And if they don't transfer from humans to Outworlders, does Raiden get to just pick who gets a mark that gets you magic powers? And speaking of Raiden, I can't believe they made him into a bitch compared to Shang Tsung. In the original movie, when Shang Tsung was threatening Earthrealm fighters before the tournament, he shut that shit down quick, fast, and in a hurry. Enough! Good Raiden. How good of you to grace us with your presence. Your sideshow freaks attack my fighters. That is expressly forbidden before the tournament, as your emperor well knows. I'd also like to point out that it is canon that Raiden is Shao Kahn's brother, who is Shang Tsung's boss. And on top of that, Shang Tsung had to double team Raiden with another powerful sorcerer just to beat him. Oh, and speaking of bitches, I can't believe what they did to Liu Kang. He loses every fight he is in, except the last one. Who is Liu Kang, you might ask? Oh, just the original champion of Mortal Kombat who saves Earthrealm by beating Shang Tsung and then eventually Shao Kahn? It's weird how he wasn't the main character of this movie. Also, it's kind of bullshit they killed Kung Lao in the first movie. Both sides have easy throwaway characters, and they could have done the same thing that they did with the Outworld characters to Earthrealm characters. Speaking of characters, it is kind of dumb that Jax's powers are stronger robot arms that just upgrade when he unlocks his powers. Mortal Kombat has had both past and present aspects in it. There are a few cyborg characters. Are they just going to grow robot bodies out of their skin when those ninjas find out their inner magic power? I actually heard another reviewer say this movie was clearly made by people who are fans of the series. Uh, no. Not even close. This movie should have been better, and it wasn't. Hopefully, I get replaced by someone else soon. I didn't know how bad it was going to be stuck down here. At 7 feet under.